Hey guys, I'm here today to talk about the books that I read in the month of August. So I have seven books that I read in August and then I also have one book I read in the month of July I forgot to mention so I'm going to talk about that first. And that book is The Mars Room by Rachel Kushner. Now this is obviously recently long listed for the Man Booker Prize and so I'm sure lots of you have heard of it and know what it's about. So I was sent this in sort of like April quite early on in the year and I decided to keep it because I'm quite interested in um, prisons um, and this is about a woman's prison so I thought I'll give that a go but I hadn't got around to picking it up and then I saw it on the long list and that prompted me to give it a go so I buddy read this with Simon and we had quite similar thoughts on it so as I said this is about a woman's prison we follow our main character who I think is called Romy I think pretty sure quite able to look and she's been accused of uh, murdering a man who was stalking her and she has life in prison and the book's sort of uh, a mixture of narratives mainly being hers but some other people that she meets in prison um, and it goes back in time to leading up to the event of the crime and then also um, sort of present day I guess in the prison. This is set in the early 2000s and um, so it's not um, you know completely contemporary but relatively so and I don't know, this is a book, I, I really don't know how to talk about it, so this isn't really um, constructed in any way, I'm just going to sort of say my thoughts in whatever order they come out. Firstly, this writing style, there's nothing um, particularly beautiful about it, so it's a really easy to read book in terms of um, the complexity of the writing style, you know, you can get through this book pretty quickly. So I feel like that's part of the reason why I finished it because you know four or five weeks on from reading it it's quite forgettable I don't feel the need to really recommend it to anyone um, I don't think there's anything particularly special about it but there was one element of this book whilst reading it that really jarred with me and I really didn't enjoy it and it's that in a lot of this book there's quite offensive language um, and offensive to all minorities like every minority is offended in this book and um, it's a pretty crass book and yeah there was a lot of points where you know something would be said about somebody with I don't know a disability or somebody who was um, homosexual or somebody of a different race and it would immediately pull me out of the narrative and I'd think Rachel Kushner obviously doesn't agree with what her character is saying but she's written that and when she wrote that what was her intention and did, how did she feel when she wrote that like it's really uncomfortable was the intention just to make me feel uncomfortable if so I feel like it's gratuitous there needs to be more of a reason than that so yeah it, it just constantly pulled me out of the narrative and it happens a lot so this is a book that I read as a book like as a construction and, and I couldn't move away from that and believe that it was actually a story um, whilst I was reading this I saw Matthew Sharapa's review which I really enjoyed and I'll, I'll put up here I and mean, he really enjoyed the book and he made a really good point this is set in the early 2000s and people weren't as politically correct and our main character Romy with a background she has also wouldn't be as politically correct so therefore it's it you know it probably is a realistic portrayal um, but even after hearing that and, and sort of agreeing um, with Matthew's reasons I, I still couldn't um, it couldn't sit comfortably with me so yeah um, this is an all right book um, it doesn't make me want to read any of her other books um, and I just don't really think her writing styles for me um, and Simon made a really good point that whilst this is a book set in female prisons um, she feels like quite a masculine writer um, the way she writes and the way she the things she decides to focus on it, it feels yeah it, it feels quite masculine um, and I just don't really enjoy that in books so I think that was probably part of it as well so yeah this one didn't really work for me um, so yeah there's that one and then during August I read another of the um, Man Booker Long listed books which I enjoyed much more and that's Everything Under by Daisy Johnson so I already really wanted to read this before it was long listed because I read her short story collection Fen really enjoyed it and also you know this author ticks boxes for me she's um, from East Anglia which is where I'm from she writes about East Anglia um, which is very rarely written about in books so I really enjoy that um, she writes about fairy tales and books and mythology and obviously she blends that with um, local folklore which I love and she is a similar age to me and writes about female characters of a similar age to me so it all feels quite relatable um, and I just really enjoy her writing style it's very beautiful and poetic and lyrical so I was super excited about this one 
and it's quite a difficult book to describe um, and initially when I was reading it I was really enjoying it but it took about 80 pages for me to really find my footing with it and to realise what the hell was going on in terms of who certain characters were and how they linked together because it is quite confusing to start with. Um, so we start with our main character and she's I think you know around the age of 30 and she's recently found her mother again after many years of um, estrangement but her mother has dementia um, so she's struggling to remember um, how they became estranged and our main character is sort of trying to pull these memories out of her to test whether her own memories of what happened are, um, are real or constructed. And then you also find out that in this, in the past, these memories they have, um, our main character was raised on a boat, um, and on a river boat, and she had a really unconventional upbringing, and then when she was around um, 16, her mother just left one day and didn't come back. Um, but prior to that, uh, this um, person became involved with them, and very closely involved with them for a short space of time, um, and you know there's a big... Thing that happened during that time that has changed their lives irreversibly and um, you find out about that person's narrative as well and tied in with all those people and all those narratives is this overarching sinister element of them all believing that there's this creature that lives in the water that's taking livestock and children um, and lots of these people on the boats are deciding to leave the fens um, and travel up north to get away from this creature so it's, it's not just this family that believe that so yeah, it's one of those books, as I said, um, it's quite confusing to start off with, but once you figure some things out it really makes sense. I think this would be a great book to reread because having um, now pieced all the story together I think it would be um, a really interesting one to read again. It's beautifully written, um, the plot is great, I, I, this is based on um, an ancient myth and I don't remember which one so apologies um, but I didn't know the ancient myth so the plot was a surprise to me um, I really enjoyed this I didn't love it as much as I hoped you know I was hoping it could be a favourite book of the year and it isn't um, but I really enjoyed it would definitely recommend it um, and you know I read this in a couple of sittings I really um, paced for it because I was really enjoying it so yeah there's that one then we have a few books that were just I didn't love them so we'll talk about those for you now so this is a bit of a random one I was in the library and recently I've been thinking you know I wish I could reread um lots of the books I read when I was a child and I don't really make time for it and then I saw this book um so this is the bed and breakfast star by Jacqueline Wilson so I loved Jacqueline Wilson when I was younger god I read her books over and over and over again and this was never one of my favourites so I probably should have chosen another but it was just lying on top of like a, a recommendations table and I just grabbed it as I was checking my books out um so I read this in a couple of hours it's not one of her better ones um I, I don't really enjoy the comedy and as lots of people have said um the ending is a bit abrupt and doesn't really try up many loose ends but it did make me really want to go back and read all her other books which I enjoyed much more um so I'm definitely going to go reread them my favourites um from memory were The Illustrated Mum, Secrets and Vicky Angel and also The Suitcase Kid. So um, yeah I'm going to get those ones out and give them a read. You know they're delightful books and it really reminds me of being young um, so yeah but this isn't one of the better ones this one's just okay so there's that one. And then we have Woman and Power a Manifesto by Mary Beard. This is two essays that have been tied together and um, Simon had a spare copy which he kindly let me have and sadly didn't really enjoy it. I thought these essays would I guess be much more I don't know like inspiring, um, educational, informative, like changing, like I thought they'd give me information I didn't already have that felt like it mattered um, whereas what ended up happening is I know she's a classicist so I should really have realised there was going to be lots of classical references um, but there was a lot more than I thought and it's particularly in the first essay I felt like she was just showing us stuff in classical text that was um, like about sexism or feminism but then there was no real point made like there wasn't enough space for a point to be made um, it was just like look these things happened in ancient times too here's some artwork here's some stories um, so yeah didn't enjoy it wouldn't recommend wasn't for me there's that one so um 
Then we have Future Popes of Ireland by Dara Martin. I buddy read this with Lauren and Simon and I think they probably both enjoyed it more than I did. Um, I like this but I don't think it's anything amazing and I hoped I would like it a lot more. So this is about um, a group of siblings um, who are raised by their grandmother because um, one of the children is a few years old and then the mother has twins, um, triplets sorry, and she dies giving birth to them. And they're then raised by their grandmother who wants one of them to become the future Pope of Ireland. Um, so there's a short section at the start of this book which is about them as children and the majority of the book is about them as adults when they're all estranged from one another and from their grandmother. And it's about, you know, you finding out more, their stories converging and, um, yeah, you, you know, you finding out what happened, why none of them speak and, and all those things. And it's just a nice, easy read. Um, it's quite comical at points. Um, some of it feels quite nostalgic. I, I hoped it would be sort of like Kit Dual and Karis Bray and it just isn't on that level, to be honest. Like, it's an easy read, but it was a book that when I put it down, I didn't pick it up again for over a week because... I didn't really care what happened to these characters. Um, and then when I did pick it up, I was like, this is easy. Like, I should have just carried on. And then I did, I carried on and read it in like two more sittings. Um, but it's pretty forgettable. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't run around recommending it, but equally I wouldn't tell you not to pick it up if you think it sounds good, because it was just good um, and nothing really spectacular for me. So there's that one. Then we have the beautiful Franklin and Luna Go to the Moon by Jen Campbell and Katie Harnett. Now, I adored the first book and I love this one too. Um, I just love the illustrations. They go so well with Jen's words. Um, just a perfect combination. Um, and I think the way Jen writes allows for such brilliant pictures to be put to those words. Um, yeah, and I really loved the um, pages on the moon with all the sort of blue and grey tones. Um, yeah, I just thought it was beautiful. So I've managed to save my two favourite novels for last. Didn't plan that, but it's worked out well. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is There, There by Tommy Orange. Now this is quite a big buzzy release at the moment, and deservedly so. I really enjoyed this one and would definitely recommend it. So I'm going to link um, a review up here by Big Al Books because it's much more in-depth than I'm about to do. Um, but I just felt like I'd seen quite a lot of reviews on this book that were really excellent and said everything I wanted to say. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the book here, but definitely go watch her review. Um, if you don't subscribe to her channel, please do. I adore her reading taste. Um, I think her reviews are phenomenal. Um, she's really observant and, you know, her commentary on books is excellent. So definitely go and watch um, that review to, you know, have a taster of her channel. So... This book is written by, as I said, um, Tommy Orange, and he is, I think he's a university lecturer, um, and he's an enrolled member of the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes of Oklahoma. I'm really sorry I butchered those names. Um, and this book is writing about the urban Native American experience, which I don't think has really um, been done before, or if it has, it hasn't been as successful as this book has. Um, so lots of people are really excited that this is bringing, um, you know, the urban Native American experience to the, the forefront. And I'm hoping, as lots of other people are, that this will, you know, encourage publishers to, to publish more books like this, because I think when one book of this type is a success, um, it leads to others being published. Now that's ne not necessarily fair, um, they should be published anyway, but it's still great that it, it you know, it creates more of a opportunity for others. So, the plot of this novel is that it's about a group of characters who are all going to go to um, the big Oakland power, which is the first time this event has happened, and lots of the characters in the narrative are on the board of the power, and they're arranging it, so they're going to be there in various forms. This book is quite oddly told in that it's told in a series of vignettes. So some people might view this as a short story collection. I would disagree. It's 100% a novel. All these narratives interweave and it, it really does feel like a novel in the sense that, you know, lots of these people r live in really close proximity to one another and they're all referencing this big Oakland powwow. There's probably around 20 characters, so there's a lot of people to keep hold of. And I will say, I read this book in two sittings, but a few days apart um, because I think that is when I maybe became addicted to a TV series for about three days and I did find that once I got to the second chunk because I'd had a few days out of it I had to sort of remind myself of who some of these characters were because there were so many so I think this book is really great um, I really like his writing style it's really easy to get through um, 
I really cared what was going to happen. I felt a lot of tension building up to the powwow. Um, people's histories were beautiful. Um, and, and mainly what I think is so successful in this book is the complex relationships people have with their heritage. Um, so there's, there's sort of every, it feels like um, a real dichotomy of perspectives. Um, there's some people who um, really live what they view as a faithful um, native experience and there's some people who didn't know they were native who have found out that one of their parents who was estranged from them was native and now they're sort of thinking you know how do I deal with this heritage if I've never known it existed um is it false if I now you know start to look more into it um is it me sort of adopting this culture that isn't mine to adopt um there's some people who have known their whole life they're native um, but the people who are raising them haven't um, raise them to be connected to it but yet they want to be um, so there's a real uh, mixture a mixture of ages as well so it's lots of different perspectives which I really enjoyed the only criticism I can say is I think there's probably three to four characters whose perspectives just weren't necessary they didn't really add much um, and what they did add was just a bit more confusion in, in the sheer amount of characters I and mean, also I've had a couple of people mention, and in hindsight I agree, that the narrative voice isn't particularly different across these characters. Um, so Tommy Orange has a very distinctive writing style and it carries through with all these characters, um, which I guess doesn't make complete sense. Um, but I still really enjoy this, I think it's a really successful debut, I think you know, I'd really recommend it to everybody and I'll definitely follow his writing from here on out. Um, and I'd really love for him to write a, a non-fiction book as well. And um, there's a prologue to this book which is um, non-fiction, giving you a bit of background. And I think he makes this history really accessible. Um, so I really love The Inconvenient Indian by Thomas King. Um, and if you've read this book and feel like now you want to know more, I definitely recommend reading that. Um, but I'd really like Tommy Orange to write a book um, of that nature, um, maybe, you know, more focused on the urban experience because I think he'd be really, um, really brilliant at doing that. So definitely recommend that one. And then lastly, this is my favourite book of the month and it's one of the littlest ones. And that is Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss. So this comes out this month in September. And um, I'm so grateful that Grant has sent me a copy of this early because I just loved it. Um, I sat and read this in one evening in a couple of hours. I mean, it's really small. It's 140 pages and the font's quite large and I'm going to reread this so I think what I'm going to do is I'll talk about it briefly here but um my plan is is I was really excited about this and also really excited about Sarah Perry's new book and um, which I haven't read yet and I'm planning to read very soon um so I think I'm going to read this again um because I think there's so much in it and it's so little um that it's so easy to just read again and I just really want to <laughs> and um, and then read Sarah Perry's book and talk about them both in the same video because they're two of my favourite authors who both had um, books I was really anticipating coming out this year. So very briefly um, this is about a teenage girl um, who is of college age and she is going to live, um, how would I describe it, really rubbish Yes, okay, it's classed as an exercise in experimental archaeology um, in Northumberland. So her, her dad's really obsessed with the Iron Age um, and so he takes her and her mother along to this um, university experiment in which there's a professor um, and a few students who attend um, and they live out in um, rural Northumberland and pretend they're living during the Iron Age. And it's a really tense novella. Um, it has so many themes, which is crazy seeing how short it is. Um, this book deals with um, lots to do with feminism and gender. Um, obviously they're taking on these Iron Age roles, which arguably could have been quite, um, quite split in terms of gender norms. And um, so there's a big commentary on that. There's a big commentary on domestic violence. Um, there's excellent commentary on class. Um, and split the north and south divide um, so if you're not from um, England there is quite a divide between the north and south um, and arguably it's quite a class divide as well um, so you know you read Jane Austen novels and all these rich people um, lived in the south and all the the work all the industry was based in the north and, and whilst it's many 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 years on um, 
that hasn't completely gone away um, and, and that was handled really well in this book as well. Um, I want to say so much more about it so that's all I'm going to say here. thought it was excellent, I really recommend it, I think it really packs a punch and I, I just love Sarah Moss so yeah this was an excellent read. So there are all the books I read in August. Do let me know down below if you've read any of them and what your thoughts are. I'd really really love to know and do feel free to recommend me any other books based on the ones I said that I enjoyed here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!